Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we are going to be making these cute little bumblebees. I have been wanting to redo my original bumblebee video for quite a while now um, and I thought this couldn't be a more perfect time since we're just a couple days away from World Bee Day. But as you can see, I had to adjust my pattern a little bit so that I could also test it out in the plushy yarn. So if you are watching this video, I'll be doing um, the video in the number four yarn. But it's also tested to work out if you want to follow the same video and do it in the plushy yarn. This is a crochet along, so I will be doing every stitch with you, but if for some reason I do something you don't understand or you get behind, there will be a 30 second drop down with the pattern instructions at the beginning of each row that you can follow along and refer back to. And if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Not only will that help me out, but that will also notify you every time I load a new video. Okay, I think that's everything. So grab your yarn and let's get started. For the small B, we are going to be using a 4.25 hook for the B part and a 5.5 hook for the wings and a number four medium weight yarn. And for the larger plushy B, we are going to be using a 5.5 for the body and a 6.5 for the wings and then a number six Bernat blanket yarn. All right, we're gonna start by making our ring and you can make your ring any way you're used to as long as you have the same amount of stitches in row one and I just fold mine over, make a knot and leave a loop on the end as if you were going to make a chain And then you insert your hook, grab your yarn, chain one, and remember that does not count as a stitch, that just attaches your yarn to your loop. And for row one, you're going to do eight single crochets into the loop. One. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I just pull my tail that I crocheted over to close up that hole there. Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. And for row two, we're going to do eight increases. So that's two single crochets in every stitch all the way around for a total of 16. So increase. For one and two, increase again for three and four, increase five and six, increase seven and eight, increase 
9 and 10. Increase. 11 and 12. Increase. 13 and 14. And our last increase. 15 and 16. And that should bring you all the way around to your stitch marker from the previous row. Row three, you're going to do one single crochet, one increase, and repeat that sequence all the way around for a total of 24. So one single crochet for one, and then an increase for two and three. Then repeat that again, single crochet, four, and an increase, five and six, seven, increase, eight and nine, ten, increase, eleven and twelve. 13, increase, 14 and 15, 16, increase, 17 and 18, 19, increase, 20 and 21, 22, and our last increase, 23 and 24. Row four, we're just going to do 24 single crochets all the way around. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and our 24th stitch, we're going to go in and grab our yarn, but we're not going to grab this yarn and pull through. We're going to leave that last single crochet unfinished so we can change our yarn. So grab whatever color you're going to be striping with. And I'm going to be doing the traditional yellow and black. And we're just going to tie that nice and close to the hook a couple of times. And leave this yellow string because we're only going to do two stripes and then we're, or two rows and then we're going to go back to the yellow. So we're just save ourselves some time from cutting and re rejoining. So pull that black through to finish off that last single crochet. And then we're ready to start our next row. And um, keep in mind, your project's going to start curling. Mine is curling towards me right now. 
you want it curling away from you so you're working on this side and not back here on this side so rows five and six is just going to be 24 single crochets all the way around and i'm going to do that consecutively so we're going to count to 48 and i'm going to flip my marker um, when i hit 24. so one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, so that was our first round. And I'm going to keep on counting consecutively. If I can get all these strings out of my way. <laughs> uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47 and on our 48th we're going to grab our yarn and come up but we're not going to finish that we're going to drop our black grab our yellow and pull that yellow through to finish off that last single crochet you may have to pull your black a little tight now row seven and eight we're going to do 24 single crochets all the way around and i'm going to do it consecutively just like the last two rows one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that was our first of two rows. 
flipping my marker over and starting our next row consecutively 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and then our 48th stitch. We're just going to grab our yarn and pull up, and then we're going to drop our yellow, grab our black, and pull our black through to finish off that last stitch. Give it a pull if you need to. Rows 9 and 10, same thing. 24 single crochets all the way around. Whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that was the end of our first of two. Now I'll start our second. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and our 48th stitch, we're going to just pull our yarn through, leaving those two loops. And we're going to cut our black because we're done with that now. And we're going to tie it back to the yellow. Remember not to pull too tight because you don't want to um, squish up your stripes. So see, I've got a little bit 
a little bit of that thread going across here before I made my tie. I didn't pull it all the way up. And now we are going to just finish off that stitch with the yellow. And we'll just stop for a second and we'll add our face right now before we get um, to closing. Okay, we're going to start with the eyes. So for the little one, I use 10 millimeter eyes. And then for the big one, these are either 18 or 22 millimeter eyes. And if you use the stitch marker like I did, this will be a little bit easier for, me, for you. But if you didn't, just find where the steps in your stripes are and you'll make that the bottom. Turn it towards you and then find um, your center and you're going to go down between rows two and three. So this is rows one and two, and then this is rows two and three. And you're going to count over four holes. So one, two, three, four. And you're going to put your first eye in that fourth hole. And then you're going to count over um, to the 11th hole. So that was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And put your other eye over there. And of course, you can put your eyes anywhere you want. This is just a guide because I know what it looks like stuffed and where I prefer my eyes. Just kind of check that they're centered and a, kind of just a little above center. If you're happy with them, put the backs on. Listen for the clicks. Now grab whatever scrap you're going to be using for the mouth, but this will also be the antenna. So um, black is my choice. And you're going to come from the inside through. Whoop. Um, decide where you want your mouth to start. This one I'm going to start just on the inside of the eye. One stitch down, one hole down, or maybe that's two, depending on how you count. And then just go over, across, and find that matching stitch on the other side. If you want to give it a smile, come up down here, go around, and then go back out that same hole. I'm just making mine straight across. Leave a little bit of a tail on the one side because this is going to be the antennas, but we're going to tie it first so that they don't slip out. If I can figure my strings out here. So I'm going to tie mine three times, not too tight because you don't want to wreck your mouth by pulling it too tight. And then flip it back and then decide where you want your antennas. I'm going to go straight up on the inside of the eye and between the la last two rows of yellow. And then thread your other end. And then match that on the other side. So you're going to come just straight up. I'm going to go about right there, I think. And then about a finger or two high, you're just going to tie a knot in the end of each of the antennas. Um, the higher you go, the more they'll flop over. 
about a finger or a finger and a half, they seem to kind of stick up. And then tie a knot in the other one. And you want to kind of keep them the same. Sorry, this is tricky to do looking in the camera. And I just kind of pull and push down the knot while I hold the other one. They're not going to be even this time, but oh, they're not bad. One's a touch longer. And then you're just going to cut those ends off just above where you tied the knot. And then if you're happy with those, we'll put on some cheeks. So grab the pink or whatever color you are going to use for the cheeks. And what I usually do is just go one stitch over from where my mouth was. So I'm going to go in here and in here probably. See, I did make my mouth a little long. Leave a little bit of tail for tying. This one I'm going to go up. Since it's way on, out on the side. And you go in there a couple of times. Or however many you prefer. And then you're going to go over to the other side and try and match that. Just go around. And then when you're happy with the cheeks, you're just going to tie that. And make sure you don't tie this one too tight either. Because when you stuff it, you don't want to pull this yarn. So you do a light knot and then a little tighter. And then another one quite a bit tighter. And give them a trim. And now we can, um, if you want to add a little bit of stuffing here, you can. Let's just do a tiny little piece. Whoopsie. It's a tiny little bit to get you started. And reattach your hook into your last stitch. And now we are starting row 11 and it's going to be 24 single crochets around. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whoops, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Row 12, we're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease and then we're going to repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. So one, two, 
and a decrease for three, four, five, and a decrease for six, seven, eight, and a decrease for nine, ten, eleven, and a decrease for twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and a decrease for fifteen. 16, 17, whoop, and a decrease for 18. Row 13, you're going to do one single crochet, one decrease, repeat that all the way around for a total of 12. One, Decrease for two, three, decrease for four, five, decrease for six, seven, Decrease for eight, nine, decrease for ten, eleven, and decrease for twelve. Now we only have one row left, so if you need to add your stuffing now, do that. I'm just going to add a little bit. Um, I like to stuff my bees fairly firm. I've learned since making my first ones. Um, do I have... Yeah, hold on. So, this, these were my Halloween bees. Look how squishy they are. They're not very stuffed. And then this one is quite a bit firmer and is going to hold its shape way better. Like just look at, here's a good example of the differences. This is the same pattern. Um, I made these in about six months later after making this pattern. <laughs> okay, so where were we? We were making some stuffed little, filling our stuffing. Just remember when you are stuffing, if you're stuffing it firm, don't stuff it so full that you start opening your stitches and it will make it a little harder to close nicely. Okay, I think that's a lot. Oh, I keep bumping this. All right, get your hook back in. And now our last row, row 14, we're going to do six decreases. And try not to get that stuffing in your hook as you're going around. So one decrease. Two decreases. Three decreases. Four decreases. Five. 
five decreases. And whoop, I got stuffing. I'm gonna redo that one. Six decreases. And then you're just gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. And then tie that off, leaving a little bit of a tail. If you want to make um, a loop with your yarn, use a, leave a little bit more so that you have enough to come up and tie. If you're using a keychain like this, then um, just enough to close it up is all you're gonna need. So let's, whoopsie. So I'm gonna get rid of my stitch markers since I got everything already finished there. I don't need it. Now you're gonna thread your yarn again. I definitely left enough yarn there. And I'm just gonna go in the top of my stitches here in and out all the way around if you're using the plush yarn maybe go through half pull it and then go through the other half since that yarn tends to want to snap quite easily and then you're just going to pull that nice and tight to close it And then find a stitch close to the center where you are that you can tie a knot or two in it. And then if you are making a tie, you're going to go back in the center. And then you're going to come out the middle where your middle um, yellow stripes are and just at the front there I went in the back on the other one but I think what you want to do is this is better for a keychain to have it in the front but what you want to do is have it so your B is pointing either level or a tad um, like like that my camera's at the wrong angle to show you how it is, but you don't want to have it so, like if you have, well, you could, I guess. Like you don't want it hanging like this or putting it way far back and he's hanging like down like that. That is going to be in my way. I should have done that after I did the wings, I guess. If you want to wait till after the wings are done, It might be a little easier. I just got ahead of myself here. And then go back in that same hole you came out and out the back somewhere. Okay, let's do our wings now. All right, for the wing, you're gonna grab your whatever size hook that you've upsized to. Um, mine's a 5.5, but it can be any size bigger. Leave a little bit of a tail. And this time you will want to make your knot with the loop on the end because we're going to be chaining. And we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then you're going to go in the second chain from the hook. So not the one on your hook, not this one right here, 
but this one. But you're going to go down underneath on the very bottom. So you should have two. It's hard to see. I'm sorry. So there should be two threads of your stitch. And then you're going to go on this bottom one right here. And you're going to do a single crochet. And these are all going to be in the same stitch. You're going to do a half double crochet. So yarn over, down into that same stitch. Grab your yarn and then go through all three of those loops. Then you're going to do a double crochet. So yarn over into that same stitch. Grab your yarn. Pull up and through, and this time you're going to go through the first two loops. And then you're going to grab your yarn and go through the last two loops. And now we're going to do a triple crochet. So you're going to go yarn over twice. So one, two, in that same stitch. Grab your yarn, and you're going to just keep going through the first two loops. And then the next two loops, and then the last two loops. Now you're going to do that in reverse, still all in the same stitch. So a double yarn over in the same stitch. Grab your yarn, go through the first two loops. Grab your yarn, go through the last two loops. Now we're going to do a half yarn over in that same stitch. Grab your yarn and pull through. Grab your yarn and go through all three loops. And then you're going to finish with a single crochet in that same stitch. And now we need to go to the other side. And this is a little tricky, but if you find that bottom string where you first went around, you're going to find it on this side where your knot is, and then you're going to pull it through. So you're making kind of a slippy, a sl it's not a slip stitch, but you're sliding it out to make a hole for your next stitches in the wing. So you're going to start with a single crochet, half. Double, triple, so make sure you go around twice, then back to a double, so wrap around once. Oops. Then you're going to do your half. Make sure they're all going in the same stitch. And a single crochet to finish. And then just slip stitch down in one of the first stitches where you started. And then you're going to tie that off, leaving yourself enough of a tail because the way I'm going to say sew it on, but you're not really sewing, you're just going to be wrapping it around one stitch a couple of times. But leave enough um, tail to do that. Now we're going to wrap this around the center two or three times. Pull it tight so that you can tell that there's two different wings. And then give it a tie on the back. And you want this to be nice and tight. You should have something that looks like this. Two little wings. Whoop. 
No, thread whichever end you have that's longest, and it'll probably be the one you just tied off. Make sure your knot is on the bottom of your wing. And this is where this part is going to be in my way. And you're just going to place it right here um, on the yellow middle stripes in the center. And you're just going to go around one of the one of the rows. So just like this, your strings are going to be in your way. So it is a, have a little bit of patience. I don't know where to put that. Now you want to go around the wing and then back in that hole of that row and go around it again. Watch that you're not getting your other tail string wrapped in there. Pull it nice and tight. I'm going to do mine only twice. You do yours however many times you want. Then I'm going to bring it back around and I'm going to tie it to my first tail underneath where I was going in. So as close, close to here as you can get it. And you want this nice and tight. Tie that two or three times. If you tie it in the back side, your wings will kind of tip towards the face of the bee, so when you're looking at your bee, the wings will kind of tip towards you. And then you're just going to thread these down under the wing and out the bottom somewhere. I like to try to go in the same stitches all the time. And then you cut those off. And your little bee is done. And see, this is where I should have put the tie a little, a little back. The tie's in front of the wings. I should have had it back here. But there we go. Cute. Look at him. Where's my other one? Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed crocheting with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. If you like the smaller bees, you can always go um, to my channel and click videos. It'll be quite far down on the bottom. It's about the third last one. Um, hope you all have a great day. Stay safe and happy crocheting.